Today we're chatting about the city different. Expect a diverse and exciting experience in the land of enchantments, capital city, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Welcome to Snowbirds and RV Travelers, the weekly show for RV enthusiasts, where we talk about parks, activities, travel tips, trends, reviews, and the latest news affecting your RV experience. For more content and guest opportunities, head over to rvpodcast.com. That's rvpodcasts.com. Don't forget to tell all your friends that this show is completely free wherever you stream podcasts. Today's episode is courtesy Dennis Began. Santa Fe, which means holy faith, was part of the Spanish Empire from 1692 to 1821. And after gaining independence from Spain, it was the capital city of the Mexican province of New Mexico from 1821 to 1846. It was then, in 1848, when Mexico signed the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, relinquishing New Mexico, as well as California, to the United States. In 1848, Colonel Edwin Sumner of the U.S. Army described Santa Fe as barren, drab, dusty, and poor. The city has certainly changed from its beginnings more than a century ago, and today it's a popular destination throughout the year. Santa Fe has a population of approximately 85,000. It's the oldest capital in the United States and located in the foothills of the Jemez and Sangre de Cristo Mountains. Conquistador Don Pedro de Peralta founded the city between 1607 and 1610, calling Santa Fe the Kingdom of New Mexico. Following the Spanish model called the Laws of the Indies in 1542, Santa Fe had a walled presidio, a church, the governor's residence, and the Santa Fe Plaza, which today is a popular gathering place with restaurants, art galleries, fashionable boutiques, and vendors selling jewelry, pottery, and baskets. A national historic site, it's situated in the center of the city and attracts countless tourists all year. Over the decades, city officials have maintained and constructed the city based on the Spanish Pueblo Revival model. All buildings must be constructed in adobe style with earth tone colors and not exceed the height of the Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi. The Spanish Empire could never have been sustained without the Roman Catholic Church. There are three in Santa Fe, including the San Miguel Chapel, which is considered the oldest church in the United States that dates back to 1610, and St. Francis Basilica of Assisi, the most impressive church in the city that was constructed between 1869 and 1886. There's also the Loretto Chapel. It was completed in 1878 and built by the Sisters of Loretto, which means light. What makes it unique is the 7 meter spiral staircase that connects to a loft. Legend has it that a mysterious carpenter took 6 months to build the stairway and then disappeared without a trace. The stairway makes two 360 degree turns without a central beam or nails for support. The tale of who designed it and built it remains a miracle or a mystery. Santa Fe is honored by UNESCO as a creative city on design, crafts, and folk art. The arts reflect the multicultural character of the city, which consists of Native American, Hispanic, and Anglo-American influences. There are 250 art galleries, with approximately 80 of them on Canyon Road, located about 1.6 kilometers southeast of the plaza. It's considered to be the best place to purchase quality art. Canyon Road is narrow with one-way traffic. It spans 1.2 kilometers and is lined with former homes that have been renovated into galleries. The art ranges from oil and water paintings and bronze sculptures to ceramics, wood, glass, and pottery. The genres are also mixed with traditional and avant-garde works. Between the plaza and Museum Hill are 14 major museums. In the plaza alone are the New Mexico History Museum, New Mexico Museum of Art, Institute of American Indian Arts, and the Santa Fe Children's Museum. The Georgia O'Keeffe Museum is very popular and showcases the artist's southwestern desert art. Known as the mother of American modernism, O'Keeffe painted and captured the colorful rock landscapes of the desert. Across the city on Museum Hill are four more, including the Museum of Spanish Colonial Art, Museum of Indian Arts and Culture, Museum of International Folk Art, and the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian. Food always seems to taste better in Santa Fe. 
The Santa Fe restaurant directory lists 260 places to dine and drink. New Mexico also has an abundance of specialty spices, herbs, and peppers. The popular question to foodies is red or green peppers? And the answer is Christmas, meaning both. As a result, traditional Mexican dishes like burritos and quesadillas have a unique flavor. Most menus in restaurants feature Tex-Mex, a tasty combination of Mexican and Texas cuisine. Popular examples are nachos and tacos. Other culinary dishes include fried bread, fasoli, frito pie, tamales, chimichangas, and breakfast burritos, which can all tastefully be washed down with a craft beer or a cool Corona. Only in New Mexico can you eat hamburgers topped with chili peppers, so be sure to bring your appetite. The term roundhouse is usually associated with trains, but in New Mexico, it refers to the state legislature. Construction costs were $5 million and the building was completed in 1966. It has four floors with a 70-seat legislature and a 42-seat Senate. The ground floor features a rotunda with a skylight that resembles a Native American basket, and the top two floors house offices and committee rooms. The state legislature meets 30 days one year and 60 days the following year. What's surprising is that representatives are not paid and only receive a per diem when in session. Santa Fe is not short on places to explore. The Opera House, San Miguel Mission, Rail Yard, Guadalupe District, the oldest house in the United States, and more than 40 festivals are all popular attractions. When visiting, there's a choice of 20 RV parks and campgrounds with Santa Fe KOA Journey, Santa Fe Skies RV Park, and Rancheros de Santa Fe being good choices. With outdoor activities like biking, hiking, golfing, river rafting, and fishing the area's number of streams, rivers, and lakes, a trip to the land of enchantment's capital will be a well-rounded getaway that offers something for everyone. Thanks for listening to today's show. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends. And if you'd like to hear more, please subscribe. For fun contests and picture submissions, check out our Instagram channel at Snowbirds RV Travelers.